Now, what I'm going to talk to you today about is health. And I'm going to tell you about my perspective on it, and, and uh, especially as far as the supplements go. But my goal is not to have you just listen. My goal is to have you love it as much as I love it. So you will be passionate about it as much as I am passionate about it. So you will be able to talk to your friend with hepatitis and tell them how simple it is to reverse. You will be able to talk to your friends with osteoporosis or with psoriasis or with whatever health condition they have, and you will show them how easy it is to reverse. And you don't have to do anything but point it out, because you know what? The reversal process is built in. Your body is a healing system. And every time you cut yourself, you're a witness to that healing system that is strictly divine, that you have nothing to do with except for to acknowledge it and give it the raw materials it needs to do its work. The human body is a healing system, and all you have to do to access that healing system for yourself is understand how that works and for your friends to teach them and show them how it works. My goal is to have you be able to do that. And the way I'm going to do it is by simplifying. Steve, wherever he is, talked about success units. Well, guess what, guys? You have 100 trillion success units. 100 trillion of them in your body. They're called cells. And all disease is cell disease. And this is the dirty little secret of health and medicine that nobody wants you to know. Tell you why they don't want you to know here in a second. But I want you to understand this. Human body is like raisin bread. Human body is like raisin bread. What are the two components of raisin bread? Raisins and bread, right? Well, that's all your body is. It's just raisins and bread. Except they don't call them raisins and bread. Any any medical folks here? Health professionals, nurses, doctors? Oh hey. They call them looking good, looking good. Alright? I see, you wouldn't believe the success stories I see, man. If you think yours, you know, there's success stories here, I've been seeing them for 17 years, and I continue to see them. Anyway, the human body is like raisin bread. Two components. Raisin bread has raisins and bread. The only two components in your body that you need to know about, the only two components in your body that break down when you have cancer, when you have acne, when you have atherosclerosis, and this is the dirty little secret of medicine that nobody's talking about. And by the way, I didn't even get to introduce myself to the guests here. I am a pharmacist. I've been a pharmacist for, since 1986 when I graduated from the University of Colorado School of Pharmacy. And I have, was immersed in the culture of drugs and poisons until 1991 when I couldn't live with myself any longer. And I started a business uh, that some of you may have, uh, know about, a skincare company, where I formulated skincare products because I couldn't stand poisoning old people and kids especially. And this is the dirty little secret of medicine that I'm going to tell you right now. The only two components you need to understand if you have multiple sclerosis or cancer or atherosclerosis or whatever your flavor of dysfunction is are the raisins and the bread. In the human body we call them cells and extracellular matrix or medical folks call them parenchyma and mesenchyma. The medical, uh, medical ease is really fast. All confusing, but all it is is cells and extracellular matrix. And friends, all disease is cell disease. Period. End of story. And the reason nobody tells you this is because drugs and the medical model is helpless at the level of a cell. Helpless. Any medical people want to dispute that? That medical model of drugs and surgery is helpless at the level of a cell. It can do nothing because a cell is divine. And a cell is never going to take the poison unless it is forced to. A cell can only be healed by the divine force working through nutrition and nutritional supplementation on the physical level, mind and feelings, on the mental and emotional level, and spirituality on the divine force level. This is the only place you can work on a cell. I can't help you with the divine force or your connection with spirituality, but recognize this. If you are sick, you are spiritually sick. Because the divine force is a healing system, a healing force. 
If you have not accessed it, you have blocked it spiritually. If you are sick, if you are not healthy, you are mentally sick. Because as you think a thought, it gets converted into biochemistry. This is not Boulder, Colorado, Airy Fairy. Gobbledygook. <laughs> this is hardcore biochemistry. You think a thought, it gets converted into a hormone. Instantly. Likewise with your feelings. Your thoughts and your feelings get converted into your physical body. I'm not the, I hate the kind of nutritionist or, or the kind of nutritional attitude that says, oh, there's just this vitamin, take this pill, take this supplement, change your diet. If you're sick, you have to address the spiritual level, the mental level, and the emotional level. And I can't help you with that. That's for you guys to do your own research on. But what I can tell you is how to address your body on a physical level. And that means understanding how to take care of a cell. But it first means understand what the heck a cell is. Now, when you start to contemplate what a cell is, and I'll give you a couple little things here in a moment, but when you start to comp uh, contemplate what a cell is, if you don't get on your knees and become the most spiritual saint that ever existed, then you haven't understood what exactly you're dealing with. So let me just give you a little flavor of what a cell is, and then we'll talk about how you address it. And then we'll take a couple questions. So you can see how you do this yourself. So you have a cell, right? A cell's like a little animal. If you took a cell, a skin cell, an eye cell, a bone cell, a thyroid cell, a liver cell, a stomach cell, an intestinal cell, whatever cell you want, and you put it in a petri dish, which is like a little dish with, with food, basically, cell food, that little cell, would develop little legs. I'm not kidding you. Little tiny paw, uh, pseudopods, they call them, would form out of that cell, and that cell would migrate to the food. And you put a little poison in the Petri dish, and the cell will run away from the food. A cell is a little animal. It has a skeleton. It has a reproductive system. It has an information storage center, a hard drive, if you will. It has an excretory system. It has a nervous system and a brain. This is a little cell. Now, you say, okay, well, that's pretty amazing. Well, it gets better because you know what? That little cell, if you take, say, a red blood cell, you could fit a hundred of them end to end on the head of a pin. So you take in your mind's eye, head of a pin, you divide it by a hundred times, you're talking about something that is so small, if it was sitting here, you wouldn't even be able to see it. Yet within that little tiny animal, that moves and runs away from poisons, you have a skeleton and a brain and a reproductive system. In fact, in that little animal that's one one hundredth the size of the head of a pen, you have six million working parts. Now, what? One one hundredth the size of a head of a pen, and you have six million working parts, the nano architecture, the tiny intricacies, the structure of this system is beyond belief. This is just one cell, people. How many cells do you have in your body? 100 million. 100 million? 100 a trillion? hundred trillion. Oh, a hundred trillion. If you counted each cell one by one, it would take you 32 million years. And this is what we are, people. This is what we're constructed of. Now, it gets even more intense. <laughs> Within that little cell, one one hundredth the size of a head of a pen, you have 18 feet of DNA. In this little structure, it's one one hundredth, one one hundredth the size of a head of a pen. If you multiply all the DNA in your body, it would go 80 billion miles. It would go to Saturn and back in one body. This is what we are. Now, you can imagine, you have a structure that's one one hundredth the size of a head of a pen with six million working parts that's producing a hundred thousand different chemicals a second. You can imagine that this incredible system is very, very structured. It's very fragile and vulnerable. This is a, an electronic system, an information storage device that is so Organized that some, somehow six million little working parts can fit in an area one one hundredth the size of a head of a pen. People, is this not the most amazing thing? This should be what we study. This should be on the front page of the New York Times. You have 18, 80 billion miles of DNA in your, in your body. 
That's the kind of stuff we should be focusing on because it's so mind-blowingly amazing. Now, you have a structure like this that is one one-hundredth the size of the head of a pin with six million morphine parts. It's producing 100,000 chemicals a second. A second. 100,000 chemicals a second. You can imagine that this system can become destabilized. You say, oh my god, I got to worry about 100 trillion cells, and each one of these things is producing 100,000 chemicals a second, and it's got 6 million working parts, and I got to worry about this? No, you don't. It's divine. It's automatic. You don't even have to think about it. What you have to do is you have to make sure, <coughs> one, you're feeding the system, you're giving the system what it needs, and number two, you're draining the crap away. And that's as simple as that. That's what good health is, people, from a physical <coughs> level. Spiritual, mental, emotional, from a physical level, good health is nothing more, nothing more. And this is the dirty little secret of medicine that I'm here as a pharmacist to tell you. Good health is nothing more than giving your body, on a physical level, giving your body the raw materials it needs, figuring out a way to make sure it drains. That's it. And when I say all disease, cancer, hypothyroidism, <coughs> multiple sclerosis, acne psoriasis, Crohn's disease, celiac disease, when I say all disease is cell disease, I'm telling you, all disease is a destabilization of this very intricate system due to lack of food and nourishment and lack of drainage. And that's it. And nobody wants you to know this. Nobody wants you to know this in the healthcare world, either because they don't know it or because they have a vested interest in you not knowing it. And so what I'm going to tell you right now is how you can address this system from a microscopic level, how you can reverse every single disease known to man. And I'm going to show you how you can do it for yourself and for your friends without even me interfering. But by the way, you got Tom, you got the Farduluses, you got people who can help you sell. Likewise, if you ever need help with a healthcare product or with a nutritional supplement with a specific client, I'm always here to help you as well. And I've helped many of you guys. My number is, my cell phone is public knowledge. I'm always willing to do three ways, but ultimately I want you guys to be able to handle it yourself. So, cut to the chase, this is how you do it. All disease is cell disease. All disease is cell disease. Cell only needs three things. Number one, it needs raw materials. Number two, it needs drainage. And number three, it needs oxygen. The oxygen should be the easiest thing to get, but we don't give it oxygen, unfortunately. And over the course of time, we learn how to not breathe. When you do not breathe, when you do not breathe, this is considered a major emergency to the body. The, the brain is constantly scanning the blood for oxygen. When the brain senses low oxygen, it triggers the stress system instantly. And when the stress system is triggered, the body goes into safe mode. You guys know what your computer is on, has you ever seen your computer on safe mode? You can, you can sort of do a couple things, but you can't do everything that you want. It's for an emergency, it's an emergency system, a backup system. When you do not breathe, your body goes into safe mode. That means it does not thrive, it survives. It just gets by. And the first thing that shuts down is your ability, ability to heal and repair. Your ability to renew and grow. Because when the body's under an emergency, all it cares about is getting out of that emergency. It could care less about healing and growing and repairing. So the number one simplest strategy to initiate the growth and repair process that is divine and built into the system is to give your body oxygen especially at the cell level. But you do that simply through breathing. I'm not going to get into that too much except, except to say that if you want to reduce the manifestations of the stress response, number one, high blood pressure, number two, a problem with growth and repair, and number three, God forbid, cancer, the simplest thing you could do is to make sure you are deep breathing. And when you deep breathe, you always want to exhale a little bit more than you inhale, and you always want your belly going out on the inhale and in on the exhale, and you want to do it slowly. Anybody with high blood pressure here? Anybody been told they've got hypertension? If you know anybody with hypertension, do 
one minute of deep breathing, uh, take your blood pressure, then do one minute of deep breathing and take it again and watch what happens. All right, so I'm not going to get into the oxygenation part. The second thing a cell needs is the drainage. Now, remember, this is all a raisin bread model here. You've got raisins, which are cells, and then you've got bread, which surrounds the cells. This is all, every, every part of your body is nothing more than this, people. But here's the cool thing. In the body, the bread comes from the raisins. Can you imagine these magical raisins that made their own bread? Imagine you had these magical raisins and they just secreted bread and you got raisin bread just from the raisins. That's what the body is. In the body, the bread is made from the raisins. The extracellular matrix comes from the cells. And the bread feeds back to the raisins. <coughs> the bread nourishes the raisins. The, uh, the bread brings oxygen to the raisins. And the bread drains the raisins' waste material. So you've got this circle going on where the, bread, the raisins are producing the bread, and the bread is feeding back to the raisins, and the poisons are getting drained. Over time, this system breaks down. <coughs> Over time, this system breaks down. What happens is the bread becomes toxic. The bread becomes toxic. This is how all disease begins. Remember, all disease is cell disease. I'll pause. I'll take some questions here to show you how this works specifically. Right now, I want you to understand, all disease is cell disease. The first thing that has to happen for the cell to be healthy is oxygen. That's breathing. We're not going to address that. The second thing that has to happen is drainage away from the cell. Are you, is this good so far, guys? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay, good. Okay. So, in a perfect system, a newborn, a healthy baby, the cells, the, the bread is pristine, and the cells, the, the raisins are doing what they're doing. They're making poisons, and they're getting drained away. As we get older, and by older, I mean one day old. That's when it starts. All right? As we get older, the bread becomes toxic and the drainage becomes defective and the cells begin to stew in their own waste. They begin to wallow in their own waste. Remember, all disease is cell disease here. All disease is cell disease and this is where it begins. Day one after birth. What happens is the bread extracellular matrix, the mesenchyma, whatever you want to call it, the ground substance, some people call it, the bread, if you will, it becomes toxic. As it becomes toxic, poisons do, don't become drain, don't drain, and the cell stews in its own way. So you have to say, what is it that makes the bread toxic? Because this is the key to disease. This is the key to all disease. All disease is cell disease, but it begins when the bread becomes toxic and the waste do not get drained. Don't you think it's important to know why would the bread get toxic? Yes. What the heck is going on? Why is this bread getting toxic? Why do we go from a pristine system, a completely pure system, to a toxic, uh, to a clogged up toxic bread? By the way, this toxicity that builds up in the bread, we call it microinflammation. To distinguish it from inflammation. Inflammation is when you get a, a punch in the eye or your trip, you get a sprained ankle, that's inflammation. We all know what that is, right? Microinflammation is when the same thing happens, this swelling and clogging response happens at the microscopic level, at the cell level. So instead of a big swollen ankle, you got a big swollen cell around the cell. So the question is, what is it that causes the microinflammation? This is very important to understand if you're going to reverse the disease process. Inflammation microinflammation is always the visible manifestation of something called your immune system. Now, how many of you have heard of the term your immune system? Right? What does your immune system do? One word. It starts with a D. D starts with a D. It's one word. No. Defense. Say it louder. Defense. You know how we have a defense department in the country? The United States has a defense department. It's always looking for enemies and it's always uh, uh, scrambling airplanes. If some air, uh, air, uh, airplane get, comes into our airspace and scrambles the airplanes, does whatever the heck the defense department does. All systems need to have a defense department, whether it's a, uh, a country system or a body system. Inflammation is the manifestation of a defensive response. Listen to this. This is key. 
Inflammation, microinflammation, which is the start of the disease process, is the manifestation of the defense response. If you have a defense response, what does that tell you? You have an invader. Something has gotten into this pristine sanctum, this holy sacred space called the internal milieu of the body. Something has gotten in that has activated the immune system, that has caused inflammation, that has prevent, prevented drainage from getting for, uh, uh, waste from draining away from the cell. Are you with me so far? Yes. The only question you need to know is what is getting into the body? I talked to somebody earlier about hepatitis. All right? Somebody had hepatitis. Oh, no cure for hepatitis. Of course there's no cure as long as stuff is co coming into the body. Itis, arthritis, hepatitis, conjunctivitis, whatever. Itis is an inflammation. Itis means inflammation. If you have an itis, you have an inflammation. If you have an inflammation, you have an immune response. If you have an immune response, something is getting into your body. The only thing we need to know to reverse the healing process and uh, to start the healing process, to reverse the breakdown process, immediamente, immediately, is to figure out what is getting into the body. Now, this is not difficult, people, because the body is a closed system. It has no ports of entry, save three. That means if something's getting into your body and it's activating the defenses and it's causing the manifestation of inflammation, microinflammation, and it's preventing a cell from leave, from, uh, toxins from leaving a cell, and the cell is breaking down, and you got a disease, you only got three places to look to start that healing process. This body's a closed system. So what are those three ports of entry? Number one, you got your skin. We use this in pharmacy all the time. Women, sometimes we use progesterone cream. I've been talking about progesterone cream on the bright side. You guys listen to the bright side? Anybody listen to my radio program? If you don't, we talk about this stuff every day, five days a week. We talked about progesterone cream. Progesterone cream is a cream you rub on your skin. <coughs> By the way, progesterone is amazing stuff for men and women. Calming, relaxing, wonderful for autoimmune diseases. You can rub progesterone cream on your skin, and it'll go through your skin. The skin is a route of administration substances into the body. But it's not easy to get stuff in through the skin. The skin is a, 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 sealed, a sealed barrier. It's designed to keep things out. So invasion through the skin is very unlikely unless you have a cut or a scrape or a burn. Invasion through the skin that's going to activate the immune system is very unlikely. So where's the second port of entry? What's the second port of entry that's not the skin? The respiratory tract. You could breathe stuff in, right? Now this happens occasionally. Sometimes people have a respiratory infection or have asthma. But that doesn't happen all that much. There's a third port of point of entry, which is the major point of entry of substances into the body, so major that for most of us, we don't stop putting stuff into the body all day long through the system. Now, how hard is this, people? This is not complicated. This is not, I, I love going to the medical library. One of my favorite things to do is go to Fitzsimmons. We've got a really cool medical library. I'm always amazed at the medical library. We've got floors, uh, floor after floor after floor, books after books after books, loaded with every single possible molecular biochemical reaction that's happening in the body, and there's zillions. We know so much about the biochemistry of the body, and we are the sickest culture in the history of the planet. No exaggeration. The sickest. No culture in the history of mankind in the 10,000 year recorded history of man has been as sick as we are, yet we know so much about the body because we're so smart, we're stupid. We're missing the most important places to address health. Now some can say it's conspiratorial, some can say it's just flat out ignorance, whatever reason, we're missing the simplest ways to address the body. So you have all diseases, cell disease. The first thing that goes wrong is oxygenation. You can take care of that with breathing. The second thing that goes wrong is toxification. You have to figure out the inflammatory process. The most important place where, the, uh, where the, the extracellular matrix becomes inflamed is through the foods you are eating. Period. End of story. Period. End of story. McDonald's is not OK. And I'm not here to preach food or, or yell at anybody about our eating habits. But the fact of the matter is, if we participate in the foods that we're being sold, we will not be able to maximize our health. There's no way because the foods that we are eating are specifically, could not even be, if they were specifically divide, designed this way, they couldn't be more effective at destroying your body. I talked to a lady, a gal, uh, 
couple days ago, the kid in Texas, she's 23 years old, she's a kid, she, uh, she's pregnant, she's gonna have a baby, she's 23, she's gonna have a baby, she wants her, has the gallbladder problems. Her gallbladder needs to be removed. I said, look, don't, first of all, guys, if you're even thinking about having your gallbladder removed, don't do it. Don't have any organs removed. They're all important. There's no spares, there's no extras. Everyone has a function, and don't let anybody tell you you don't need that silly thing, which they say. Anyway, so we're thinking about having a gallbladder removed. If you have a gallbladder problem, the gallbladder is a digestive organ. Nothing speaks digestive problems and bad food choices more loudly than gallstones. Anyway, she says to me, oh, you mean I can't even have, I can't even have grilled chicken? No, you cannot have grilled chicken if you have a gallbladder unless you know where that chicken is from. Or said a grilled chicken sandwich, she said. No, you can't have a grilled chicken sandwich. If the people who aren't making your, your food don't love you, you shouldn't be eating the food. Taco Bell does not love you. <laughs> they don't. McDonald's does not love you. It's, this is so important, people, to make these kinds of uh, food decisions. In any case, it all goes awry at the digestive system level, and it happens at day one because human beings are born premature. We are born premature. We come out of the womb early. Because we come out of the womb early, there's systems that nature has designed breast milk to develop, and those are the immune system and the digestive system. If our parents didn't breastfeed us, or they didn't breastfeed us long enough, or they were nutritionally compromised, we will be nutritionally comp we will be digestively compromised from day one. Then you throw in the standard American diet, and it all tumbles out of control from there. The second system that breaks down after the digestive system breaks down is the blood sugar system. This is why diabetes is an epidemic, big time epidemic. After the digestive system breaks down, the, the blood sugar system breaks down. Once the blood sugar system breaks down, the body goes into adrenal stress issues and hypothyroid issues. And if you guys don't know about hypothyroidism, you better. Because just looking at it around this room, I can guarantee you at least 70% of you have thyroid issues. The thyroid regulates everything. And once the thyroid slows down, everything else slows down. And this is where the extracellular matrix begins to get poisoned. Food starts to deposit inside this extracellular, the bread, literal components of food, literal pieces of hamburger, little pieces of taco, little pieces of oatmeal. They literally deposit, microscopic pieces, deposit in the bread. The bread becomes toxic, the cells become toxic, they break down, you have disease. It shows up 15 years later, 20 years later, 30 years later, and the doctor said there's no cure. Because there is no cure. But what you can do is you can reverse the process. You're not going to cure it, you're going to reverse it. Cure implies that you're sick and only some medical miracle can save you. Reverse it is the job of the divine force. You don't have to think about it. You just have to feed it and you just have to help it uh, by not putting the poisons into the system. So the detoxification process begins by making better food choices, number one. Number one, if you want to have your client improve no matter what their health condition is, even if it's cancer, have them make better food choices. And you know what one of the best food choices they can make is no. That's one of the best because the less you eat, the longer you will live. The less you eat, the longer you will live, and fasting intermittently is one of the most powerful things you can do for your health, no matter what your condition is, even if you're already healthy. So you got two right away, breathing and fasting, two amazingly important things that you can do. Uh, third thing you can do to help improve drainage, make no mistake about it, not putting the poisons in in the first place is the most important thing. The third thing that you can do is move your body, because the body's poison drainage system, which is called the lymph, is tied to your muscles. You have uh, two main pipelines in your body, circulatory pipelines, two major ones. One is your blood pipeline, veins and arteries. The other is your lymph pipeline. The uh, blood pipeline, the veins and the arteries, they have a pump. You have a big circle of tubes, and you got a pump. The blood goes through, it comes around, the blood goes through, it comes around, it's pumped. Unfortunately, the poison pipeline which is called your lymph, has no pump. At the bottom, it's, it's got real problems because it's got to go up against gravity. But throughout the body, there's no pump, but no problem because the divine force is perfect always. It's designed a pumping system, and that pumping system is called your muscles. 
So moving your body around is the most important thing you can do for your lymph. And even breathing was, is enough to move the lymphatic vessels. Even deep breathing. Any kind of movement that you could do, and it doesn't have to be a lot if you're, even if you're obese, obscenely overweight, morbidly overweight, hundreds of pounds overweight, you can go up and down on a chair. You can just sit up and down, sit up and down. Anything you can do to move your body. You know how they always say how, oh, my grandfather ate all this and he smoked cigarettes and lived to be 90. You know how they always tell you about how healthy people were 150 years ago, 100 years ago, they didn't have any problems, right? Well, guess what? 100 years ago, they walked to the store. They walked to the next town. They didn't have any uh, ways of move, uh, uh, mo uh, uh, cars and buses and, and uh, transport systems. They walked. They chopped wood. They carried water. They moved their lymph. They moved the fluids around, the uh, waste fluids around. So the second important thing you can do to detoxify is to, or the third thing, there's breathing, not putting the stuff in. The third important thing is moving your body. So you're right away taking care of the two most important, or two of the three most important ways to address the cell. Number one, make sure you're breathing correctly. And number two, make sure you're not putting the poisons into the body. Make sure you're improving the drainage system of the lymph. And then we come to number three, which is feeding the cell. Now remember, there ain't a drug on the planet that can feed a cell. There is not a surgical procedure on the planet that can feed a cell. There is not an Obamacare clause that can feed a cell. There is not one single thing your doctor can do to feed a cell, period, period. Nothing the medical model can do to feed a cell, but that's no problem. You can do it yourself. A cell doesn't eat a lot of stuff. It only eats from a certain menu. You know what we call that menu? This is the genius of longevity. We call it the mighty 90. That's what a cell eats. It eats the mighty 90. It eats the eight chapters of the nutrition, for those of you guys who have seen my video. It eats from a specific menu. It needs protein. It needs fats in the form of essential fatty acids and saturated fats. It needs sugars and carbohydrates. <coughs> it needs fiber, although the cell doesn't quite eat fiber. It needs water, <coughs> and it needs vitamins and minerals and accessory nutrients. And the coolest thing about longevity, in addition to the fact that you hang around with a lot of cool people, and you learn a lot, and you get a lot of personal development, we are selling exactly what a cell needs to eat. We're not selling anything fancy. And there are 400 products. I don't even know the 400 products. I only talk about seven or eight of them. We're selling what a cell needs to eat. This is your business, people. How cool is this business? The reason you get these kind of results, the reason you hear people losing 100 pounds, losing 150 pounds, their blood pressure is dropping, they're off all their meds. Listen to my radio program. People call all the time saying these things. It's because we're not selling anything. Fancy, we're selling the things your cell needs to eat. And it's called the Mighty 90, and it all starts off with the Healthy Start Pack. And if you want to know how to get yourself clients quickly, Steve's idea with the card is awesome. But you want any better ideas? Get them on that Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Get your friends on the BTT. Buy the little packets. Have buy, buy an extra jar for yourself and hand it out to people. Buy an extra jar and give one to somebody. Watch what happens with the BTT. Why? Is there something magical? No. It's just the basic raw material that your cell needs to eat. But there's a little wrinkle with the BTT, and this is why the BTT is so effective. And I always like effective. I don't want people to have to wait 30 days. I want them to wait three days, two days. I want them to see results. When I, those of you who use my skincare products, the reason my skincare company was so successful is because you put my products on, you notice them. How long did it take to notice them? You notice them like right away. You want people to get results right away. When they're on that BTT, they get results right away. Why? Well, number one, in the world of nutrition, one of the beautiful things about health and nutrition is the sicker you are, the faster you turn it around. The more weight you need to lose, the faster it drops. The higher your blood pressure is, the faster it goes back to normal. How cool is that? How cool is that? When you get people on the BTT, number one, they're getting nutrients. For most people, they haven't even smelled them, those nutrients, maybe in their entire life. But number two, what's really cool about the BTT, what makes it a 
marketer's dream is the fact, this is where Dr. Wallace is a genius, Dr. Wallace is a genius anyway. I don't know what you guys know about him, the guests here, I know people who are part of the company know about him. This man is a visionary of the highest degree, and I've been studying nutrition since 1982. This man is a visionary of the highest degree. He came up with one of the first guys to single-handedly talk about cartilage and glucosamine, one of the first guys to, to single-handedly bring to the marketplace the idea of colloidal minerals, one of the first guys to bring the idea of nutritional supplementation to people, but one of his great geniuses was, was understanding the power of liquid nutrition. When you put liquid nutrition into your body, it goes right to work. The best way to do your nutrients is to drink them. Always, in pharmacy school, they say number one, uh, tablets, poorest absorb, or I should say number one, uh, best absorbed intravenous. Number two is through uh, the respiratory tract, inhaling it. Number three, suppositories. And number four, drinking it. So if you don't want to stick something up your, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> <laughs> or inject it, all right, drink it. <laughs> Seriously, next to the suppository is the best thing going. So maybe you want to bring that up to Dr. Wallach next time. <laughs> you might come up with another beyond, beyond tangy candy. <laughs> minutes here. Drink your nutrients. When you drink your nutrients, number one, they bypass digestive problems, and so many Americans have digestive problems. The latest number is 100 million. It's probably more than that. So you do the di uh, you bypass digestive problems. Number two, the, uh, with the liquid format, for most people, it, when you uh, give them nutrients, they haven't had nutrients before, those nutrients go right to work. And number three, it's especially effective for older folks. Give grandpa a Beyond Tangy Tangerine auto ship. If you know somebody in a nursing home, put them on auto ship for Beyond Tang Tangerine, the difference will be astounding, especially mentally, by the way, because the brain is burning nutrients almost as, probably faster than any other system of the body. So you'll notice results mentally quickly. Get them on the Beyond Tang Tangerine. The second thing you want to do if you want to get quick results is get people on the probiotics. Probiotics are uh, good bacteria. You guys have all heard of probiotics. The good news about probiotics, we got one awesome one called Nightly Essence, which I love. It's my personal favorite probiotic product. It is a little bit expensive, but there's a new one that just came out. I don't know if you guys know about this. Yes. And it's not quite as intense as the Nightly Essence, but it's a lot less expensive and very, very tasty. Get your clients on probiotics. You will notice quick results. In fact, the must-have nutrients that everybody needs, the must-have nutrients that everybody needs, every human being on the planet, this is the cost of doing business of being human. You know how business has a cost of doing business, you want to be in business, you got a cost of doing business. You don't argue about it, you figure out how to work it into your budget, work it into the price, it's the cost of doing business. Can you relate? There's a cost of doing business, right? There's a cost of doing business for being human as well. Essential fatty acids, the ultimate daily, the ultimate EFAs, they call it the ultimate daily and a probiotic. And then throw in the Beyond Tang Tangerine, cost of doing business of being human. Now, I've, I've got only a couple minutes here, but I want to point out this idea that all, all diseases sell disease. I want to show you how we do it real quickly. So I want two people, can I do three people? Three people, real quickly. Three specific health issues and try to make it something that people understand. Something that you can relate to uh, personally or with a friend or family if you want to help. Yes, Evie. Yeah, my vitamin B12 is extremely low, so low that they put me on a shot when I was awake. Right. Vitamin B12 is an extremely, 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 extremely important vitamin. It's involved in every system of the body. And vitamin B12 is extremely, uh, extremely hard to absorb. The cells use vitamin B12, uh, nerve cells and brain cells, or nerve cells and muscle cells especially use vitamin B12, but the whole system uses vitamin B12. She's not absorbing her vitamin B12. It's somewhat common. Vitamin B12 is absorbed in the stomach. In order for vitamin B12 to be absorbed, there's something called IF that needs to be secreted. IF is secreted out of special IF cells. All disease is cell disease, people. Our friend Joanne has a problem making the stuff that's required for vitamin B12 absorption. She has a stomach cell breakdown. All disease is cell disease here. Your particular flavor, you have much more than that, but this is where the B12 issue is coming from. Her particular flavor of cell breakdown is in the stomach cells that produce intrinsic factor IF 
for the absorption of vitamin B12. All disease is cell disease, so what do we do? How are we going to address this problem? Well, what are the three areas we work at when a cell is, in, is breaking down? Starvation, suffocation, toxification. So for Joanne, and I want you to hear this because the other two people are going to say the same thing. For Joanne, suffocation of a cell. How do we address this? Number one, make sure you're oxygenating, and number two, make sure you're blowing off carbon dioxide. Secondly, all disease is cell disease. The second form is toxification. The cells in the stomach, are you with me so far? Does it make sense? Cells, cells in the stomach that make IF, intrinsic factor, are breaking down. They're not making the IF. You don't absorb the B12. So breathing is the first thing you want to do for cell health, with detoxification, uh, blowing off carbon dioxide. The second thing is detox. So we got to make sure, number one, there's two areas you work on detox. Number one, you make sure you don't put the crap in and, and don't have a preconceived idea about what crap is. Lettuce can be crap for you. You have to see how your body responds to specific foods. When I say crap, I'm talking about food allergies and food intolerances. Joanne, you're going to have to focus on foods that cause you digestive distress. The easiest way to tell if you have a problem with the food is how do you feel after you eat it. It should be the easiest thing to know. How do I feel after I eat it? Any foods that you put in your system that cause intolerances or cause allergic responses are going to mess up that stomach cell. Are you, does this make sense? Okay, the, then you have to drain the poisons away through moving the body. Okay? And then number three, the mighty 90. That means the beyond tangy tangerine. That means uh, you're going to do some digestive stuff also. You want the ultimate enzymes. You want the probiotics. Focus on the cells of the stomach. Does that make sense? So for vitamin B12, did anybody tell you this, by the way? Did any doctors tell you any of this stuff? Anybody tell you? Does this make sense? Did you, guys, did you see how we, how we did this? You go back to the cell, you find out what cell it is, and then you work on the toxification, the suffocation, and the starvation. I didn't tell you anything specific about, oh, well, for vitamin B12 deficiency, have some of this and have some of that, and take care of the vitamin B12 deficiency. No. The good news here is, Joanne doesn't just have stomach cells that are breaking down. You have other cells that are breaking down, too. You just happen to see it there. When you start to work this way, you're going to change the health of all of the cells in the entire system. Give me another one, and, and you'll, this will make more sense. Yes, sir? Uh, how do you get more oxygen to someone COPD? COPD. Who knows what that is? Chronic <coughs> constructive pulmonary disease. Right. Breathing problem, right? All right, so COPD is caused by an inflammation in respirocytes. Or it can also be a muscle disease. It could also involve the muscles of the lungs, and then it involves the myocytes. Site means cell. Respirocytes means cells that help with respiration. Myocytes means cells that are muscle. So COPD is a cell disease of lung cells. So how do we deal with cell disease? Well, number one, you've got suffocation. So we take care, we make sure we're deep breathing, we make sure we're blowing off carbon dioxide. Obviously, it's a little bit trickier if somebody has COPD, but they can still do it. Number two, you eliminate the toxicity from coming into the body, and you improve the cell's ability to drainage. That means laying off the foods that cause the problems, that cause the whatever kind of uh, breakdown issues they're having. They more than likely have something going on with their foods. And you make sure you're exercising and doing everything you can do to improve drainage of toxins from a cell. And number three, you focus on feeding a cell with the mighty 90. Get your client on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Get your client on the ultimate EFAs. EFAs are especially important for the lungs. Get your clients on magnesium, which can help relax everything. Do you see what we're doing here, people? I'm not targeting COPD. I'm not targeting vitamin B12. We're targeting the cells. And, and this is so easy. You can do it. Everybody can do this. You don't need to be me, as long as this makes sense. Give me another one. Yes. Hepatitis. Hepatitis. And this is the last one we'll do, and I'll stay as long as you want afterwards. Hepatitis. Itis means what? That one's really easy. Now, hepatitis is funny. I, it's not funny. It's, it's sad funny. It's not ha-ha funny. Because hepatitis is, there's hepatitis A, there's hepatitis B, there's hepatitis C, there's hepatitis D. No, there's just hepatitis. It doesn't matter. You've got an inflamed liver. That's all. It doesn't matter if it came in through drugs or it came in through a, a fecal route or it came in through whatever way it came in through. You have an inflamed liver. That means because all disease cell. is cell disease. You do not have an inflamed liver. You have an inflamed liver cells. All right? This is, this is easy, right? This is not hard. All right? So, inflamed liver cells. Well, what do you do? They're little cells. They're little animals. They've got six million working parts. They're tightly organized. It doesn't take much to destabilize them. What do we do to make sure this thing is healthy, this cell is healthy? And by the way, cells are constantly being born and constantly dying. This is the Behold, 
I make all things new again. Cells born and they die, and they're born and they die. Liver cells born and they die. They can take your entire liver out and leave a little sliver of it, and two months later, you'll have a brand new liver. So how dare any medical professional say hepatitis is uncurable? Instead of saying, I'm an ignorant medical professional, I don't know how, they say there's no cure. Am I offending any medical professionals? I hope not. Because this is, what, this is the silliness of it. Hepatitis, so you have a, a toxic liver cell. What do you do? Suffocation. Make sure you're deep breathing. Make sure you're blowing off the toxins. Make sure you're breathing, uh, exhaling a little bit more than you're inhaling. Uh, toxification. Make sure you're not putting the crappy food in and make sure that you're improving drainage through moving your body. There's other ways you can do it as well. And third, make sure you're feeding the system. The mighty 90. Make sure you're getting your protein. Make sure you're getting essential fatty acids. Make sure you're getting your vitamins, vitamins and minerals and fiber and water. And don't let any medical professional tell you what you have is uncurable. Period. I don't care if it's stage 4 cancer. It remits. If it can remit for one person, it can remit for anybody. And that's the beautiful thing about this whole system. Is I'm going to wind it down, right? Oh, you want you want to say one thing? Ben, first of all, you you are so electric. I've never heard anybody in my life speak with the passion and the energy and the wisdom that you do on health. Thank so thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Clemson study reports. Oh, just coming you guys. Can you I forgot. Just address why oh, you, so you guys. Scary? You guys. Now, I've been seeing the BTT. I don't need proof because I've been seeing it and I've been studying this stuff and I've seen it over and over again. I get letters and I get testimonials. Go to my Facebook page, read my Facebook wall, listen to the radio program. People call. I've been seeing this for 17 years, right? But what's, what just happened, and I called MZ as soon as I heard this, I called MZ. I said, This is going to change everything. This is a game changer, people. If you're not in longevity, you want to get in it right now. Right now, and for you guys in longevity, wait till you see what's going to happen. Because what they finally did—I don't know what took them so long—but they finally did this. They got a major university, Clemson University, to do controlled, peer-reviewed, published studies on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and a couple other products. I forget what the other ones were, the Osteo FX made, but the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, and the results were so good. Clemson wants to continue doing it. It's Clemson University, right now. You will now be able to, the, the naysayers and the people who don't believe, and the medical professionals who love seeing research and love seeing the science, you will now be able to take these papers, these research uh, papers that were done in controlled studies and published in peer-reviewed journals, and show them the most amazing results, the same results you know you all have, but now you'll be able to show them, which is why if you're new here and you're not in longevity, now is the time to get on board. You guys, I went way over board. Thank you so much. <laughs>